I'm Dr. Al Scott, PhD, and I first wanted to learn yoga in the early 1960s when I was actually 14 or 15, and uh, I read Krishnamurti and I tried to find other books on yoga and teach myself out of the book, and no one around me was doing yoga, so of course I couldn't do that. Uh, I was riding in the subway and there was a poster with a picture of Swami Satyajananda, and a beautiful, magnificent beard and deep eyes. He had just arrived in America and it said, uh, uh, learn about yoga, learn about you, or something like that. And uh, I was one of his first students, I don't think there were more than 10 others that had studied with him. And there were only about three or four other students in the living room taking the class. And so that was my introduction to yoga. And it was like, wow, I feel so great afterwards, I've got to do this again. And so I went to graduate school at uh, Duke University in, and uh, they had a program uh, at Duke University uh, where they had just obtained some biofeedback equipment in the engineering department. And they were looking for a psychologist to do biofeedback with the equipment they had. Able to bring some Swami Sachidananda down uh, to do. Um, and part of his stay, he went into the biofeedback lab. And as soon as he sat down in the room um, and they hooked him up, he had a huge amount of alpha waves, which is the waves you, we make when we're calm, alert, attentive and a lot of uh, theta, and within uh, 30 seconds, his whole brain became almost uh, complete uh, theta, which are the very slow brain waves of deep meditation, very rhythmic. Uh, it was amazing that he could do that uh, so quickly. Uh, my doctoral dissertation, I compared uh, yoga breathing with a guided meditation uh, with a lecture on meditation and one more treatment group was the combination of yoga breathing and guided meditation and the group that had both training did the best and the placebo group, the one where we just talked about meditation, there was uh, no change. The people who had the highest level of anxiety did the best. and. That actually surprised me. I actually expected that they were stuck and wouldn't come down. But they had the biggest drop, drop. so that's good news for uh, those of us who are anxious. There have been many kinds of biofeedback in the, developed in the last uh, 40, 50 years, and hundreds of research studies applying it to headaches and other medical problems, other uh, pain problems. And, um, some of the recent ones are very helpful. One is, uh, it's been found that um, when we're deeply calm, our heart rate is not only slower, but more importantly beats very regularly, exactly in rhythm. And to the, to, to the degree your heartbeat is variable, uh, you are more uh, internally stressed. Well, there's very inexpensive equipment now uh, uh, which can measure the regularity of your heartbeat. And it has an interesting link to yoga pranayama because they've done research with different kinds of breathing patterns and uh, complete breath, it's called different things, but a uh, slow inhale, say three count in, two count hold after inhale, that's important, and a longer exhale, twice as long, six exhale, two hold. So it's three in, two hold, slower, six out, two hold. That exact uh, timing has been found to be the best for uh, improving your uh, heart rate uh, variability, making it more uh, constant. And when I got my PhD, I started a medical clinic for treating migraine and other severe headaches in Mountain View, California, that's in Silicon Valley. And uh, there is a lot of research showing how biofeedback helps with various kinds of headache because you are measuring with biofeedback some of the underlying physiology of headache. So by immediately showing someone what 
how they're doing on that measure, they can learn to modify it in a favorable direction. So this is easy to understand with ordinary tension muscle contraction headaches, which are not as severe as migraine, but can occur more often. We can measure how tight the muscles are in the forehead or the jaw. We can find which muscles are the worst, put the sensors there, and convert the information about how tight it is to a display that the person easily understands such as a change in color or music or volume, so they're getting continuous feedback. That's what makes for biofeedback, is instant um, representation of an inner physiological process. That enables control. So in uh, migraine headaches, um, the uh, blood is withdrawn from the hands or from the fingertips and actually goes into dilated arteries um, uh, just outside the brain. So the hands are a little cooler, and so if a migraine patient can learn to warm their hands, not by adding heat, but by deeply relaxing and letting the blood flow into the fingertips, they can reverse the, the inner physiology blood flow of migraine um, outside the uh, cranium. So that's one way uh, biofeedback works. I am uh, giving lectures uh, on uh, uh, pathways of aging and strategies to prevent aging and uh, there are ordinary things one can do that greatly lower risk of the major neurological diseases you mentioned, cancers and heart disease, uh, just by um, changes in diet, things like eating more dark chocolate, uh, three, three to five cups of coffee a day, um, uh, eating at least uh, two pounds of broccoli a month. Uh, for reducing cancer, uh, pomegranates uh, decrease the plaque deposition in the arteries. My Just wife had a very bad ankle injury and a number of surgeries, and I wanted to find a good place for her to recover, so I wanted to find a yoga center. And um, I, I just uh, looked up dozens of yoga centers in Thailand, and the reviews for Samhita were the most glowing and accurate <laughs> in my experience. Um, uh, everything is very well run here. The, the teaching staff is high, high quality and wonderful people and uh, the food is, is truly superb. So I'm very delighted to be here and look forward to coming back next year as many people do. Mm. Yeah, I hope so.